Aloha and welcome to Island Connections. Uh, tonight's topic is the day after. And the day after November 5, I interviewed uh, three professors who uh, observed the political and social scene in Hawaii. And we have uh, footage uh, about uh, those kinds of interviews, uh, which we will show you later. And also we have tonight uh, two uh, community activists who also uh, are observers of the political scene and uh, Claire Shimabukuro, uh, she is uh, with uh, Local 5 and she's a community activist with Local 5 and she's also the executive editor of uh, People's Fund. Uh, so welcome uh, uh, to the show and thanks for coming. Hello. And uh, Bart Dame, he's a community activist and uh, he once served at, uh, on the <laughs> State Democratic Party uh, Central Committee. So he's uh, quite an observer of the political scene also. So thank you for coming and sh to share your views with us. Uh, so uh, I'd like to ask you, like, you know, the day after, today actually the week after, you know, but uh, the day after uh, the uh, election results. So as a community activist, as a voter, well, how did you feel and what was your reaction? Well, a couple of things. First of all, uh, I observed that, uh, that, that Linda Lingo did a lot of things that, that uh, organizers do. Number one is that she had, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, un unlike uh, Democrats and, and unionists, she had a lot more money mm -hmm. than the other side. And, and the, uh, but what she did do was that she had a game plan, mm -hmm. which appeared to be executed very well, and actually had people on the ground organizing, which is usually uh, what Democrats and labor Democrats do going into elections. And so that was the very first thing that struck me. Uh, with regard to any of the ramifications for what it means for labor, those are things that I am constantly thinking about. Number one, uh, the fact that I'm certain that some of the hard-fought uh, rights that we have, such as uh, prepaid health care, may be under attack. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's it's going to be it's going to be important for us to observe these next few years and and see uh, what it is we need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Bart, uh, any reaction the day after when you woke <laughs> up and <laughs> read the paper? Or uh, I'm not sure I went to sleep that <laughs> night. Actually, uh, I, I actually stayed up and watched the local results and uh -huh. watch the national results uh -huh. and the close election races there and uh -huh. was hoping, well, at least maybe we'll, we'll get some of the Senate and maybe won't lose that badly. And so I went to bed kind of um, stumbled. I must say that actually since the Republicans were elected both locally and nationally, the weather has improved tremendously. We've had beautiful mm -hmm. days. Uh, although the mainland has had these killer tornadoes, which is probably mm. due to the Bush administration and the Republican <laughs> Senate <laughs> not believing in global warming. <laughs> okay. That's On a, a more serious a, note, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was kind of stunned. I, I had um, gone back and forth as to whether I expected Maisie to win. I thought she was going to pull it off. And then a few days prior to the end, I, I realized or I started sensing that Lingle was actually going to win. Mm -hmm. Even so, it was still sort of a punch in the chest mm -hmm. uh, when she did win. Uh, I'd have to agree that, that in many ways Lingle's people ran a very good campaign. Mm -hmm. I think she was really helped by a very favorable press. Mm -hmm. um, it, sometimes with these political endorsements you kind of like them to, to come out six months in advance because mm -hmm. they already know who they're going to support. Mm -hmm. and it was clear uh, both newspapers uh, supported uh, Lingle from the last election mm -hmm. I mean, and that just followed over. Mm -hmm. Right after she lost four years ago um, the media people were already talking about how can we keep her prominent. Uh, Honolulu Magazine offered her uh, a, a monthly column in their, in their uh, uh, magazine. A uh, radio station offered her a talk show. Mm -hmm. They were determined from that day to work with her for four years and give her favorable yeah. press. Mm -hmm. So when they did make missteps, and I think they did make missteps, uh, they were not magnified mm -hmm. uh, generally unless they were really mm -hmm. egregious. Anytime the Democrats made missteps, and the Democrats made a lot of missteps, uh, those were reported. And I think that there's a lot of conspiracy theory stuff about the uh, motives of the Democrats, like when Patsy Mink died, mm -hmm. that uh, really hurt mm -hmm. uh, the party. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, those were reflections. The fact that people were willing to believe those things were reflections of the distrust of the Democrats yeah, that's built over years. Right. Let's look at uh, the Elmo and uh, see, just to give the uh, viewers uh, an idea about, uh, you know, Lingle and Maisie Hirono. Uh, the um, areas uh, in the red or maroon are uh, Lingles, and this is Oahu here. 
and the other area is uh, Hirono. And uh, we're talking about uh, statewide, uh, Lingil got 197,000 plus votes, and Hirono got 179,649 uh, votes. Uh, so this is just uh, to give uh, people an idea. Uh, this comes out of the uh, Sunday paper, last Sunday paper, but uh, it's quite uh, illustrative of, uh, you know, the power of the uh, Republicans in terms of their campaign at this moment. Uh, on the neighbor island also, we have uh, another uh, uh, way of showing, you know, the Lingal and the uh, and the Hirono uh, campaign and uh, the votes that they got and uh, so forth. So uh, it'll be ready in, in a bit so we can uh, like uh, look at it. Uh, there they are. So um, the areas uh, in the uh, black are uh, Lingle's uh, areas. But uh, of course, uh, Lingle won um, the islands uh, except for Kauai. Mm -hmm. She didn't get anything uh, from Kauai. But this is uh, to give us an idea what, uh, what really happened uh, in there. Um, we have... Uh, a, uh, uh, I, I did an interview, and we have a uh, footage uh, from uh, Jonathan Okamura. He's a professor in ethnic studies, mm -hmm. and he observes uh, the uh, political scene and uh, uh, the uh, social scene as well. And he uh, let's let's listen to what he says and uh, see what uh, if we agree with what uh, he's saying or not. So when the tape is ready, we we roll it. I think I would attribute the Lingo victory to voter dissatisfaction with the Cayetano administration, more so than uh, a Republican tide sweeping candidates into office. Uh, I say this because in the state House of Representatives, the Republicans lost three seats or four seats. And so Linda Lingo's victory didn't propel other Republicans into office, uh, continuing the gains that they had made in the 2000 elections where 19 Republicans were elected to the state house, the uh, highest number that they've ever had uh, since statehood. Uh, I think uh, in the case of Maisie Hirono, she didn't distance herself substantially enough from, uh, from Cayetano, uh, something that Cayetano started doing quite early before the, the 1994 election so that the voters uh, could clearly see his position as opposed to Y. Hayes. And in Maisie Hirono's case, she really did not make any strong statements critical of the Cayetano administration. She joined the picket line briefly during the strikes in April of uh, 2001, but she did not come out with a strong statement in support of the teachers that would have been critical of Cayetano's lack of support for public education, including the University of Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, uh, Claire, uh, here um, the Democrats rely on labor quite a bit. Uh, that's their uh, history. And then uh, Hirono, who was running for office or wanted to run for, uh, you know, governor, didn't really uh, support labor, especially the HSTA and the UPA strike. Uh, do you read it that way or how do you read it? Well, th there's so many different perspectives on that. First of all, I think that um, the Democratic Party at one time was definitely the party of labor. Mm -hmm. And uh, and because labor, labor drove it so strongly, it became the party that won, mm -hmm. and also the party that, bro that broke the oligarchy. And so subsequently, uh, many people who may or may not be Democrats are, are uh, or may not be Democrats, or, or Democrats, or in the Democratic Party. And so therefore, there's been sort of a, a confusion within the Democratic mm -hmm. Party as to what it stands for today mm -hmm. because it's become such a powerful, powerful uh, organization. And therefore, I think that, um, that the missteps that, that John spoke about, about you know, not coming out strongly and, 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 uh, and supporting the teachers, which would have been something that would be a very powerful message to unions, mm -hmm. is, is uh, quite likely a, a desire to remain, quote, neutral. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a serious mistake because, mm -hmm. you know, after all, many people, many uh, labor unions want to see someone that's going to represent their interests. Yeah. And so yeah. they're, they're, it may not only be a tendency uh, or a t have been a tendency for Maisie to, to, uh, to take, but also I think the Democratic Party sort of in, a, in an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vis-a-vis well, -vis labor and vis -vis so on, labor. yeah, right. 
Uh, but uh, like uh, Jonathan was talking about uh, also the, the question of uh, it's like people uh, were uh, um, really um, angry at uh, Caetano, for instance, and really didn't want to support uh, the Democrats because of that. So how do you read that? Well, I mean, uh, Ben is, is why I stopped being active in the party. Mm -hmm. um, I had worked with the Rainbow Coalition for, for a number of years. I spent six years on the Central Committee of the Democratic Party. And uh, the reason why I was elected and the reason why we had so many people who were elected, including Richard Port, mm -hmm. party of the chair, and then afterwards Marilyn Bornhorst, who while wasn't really active with the Rainbow, she was supported by the Rainbow. The reason why we got elected is because we told a lot of people we can make positive progressive change mm -hmm. in the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. Mm -hmm. And when Ben got in, after we did tell people vote for Ben, uh, he started enacting a lot of policies which were really much more Republican mm -hmm. and offended a lot of the traditional Democratic Party base, including our people, mm -hmm. and we were no longer able to mobilize our people. In fact, it became, I became tired of making mis you know, apologies for, for Ben Cayetano yeah. and, and mm -hmm. others, and I was fearful of losing my credibility, and so I just sort of stopped doing that. Um, I think, in a certain sense, that's what happened more generally. Mm -hmm. If you look at the numbers of how people voted this time, uh, Linda Lingle got just about exactly the same vote she got four years earlier. Mm -hmm. Some people may have switched sides. Mm -hmm. Maisie got something like 25,000 less than what Ben got four years ago. Mm -hmm. And what happened is that the base didn't turn out. But it wasn't mm -hmm. just the base, it was the middle level cadre, if mm -hmm. you will, of the party who were unable to really stir themselves into being action, motivated yeah, right, uh, right. because the, the party did not have a message because there was a lot of confusion. Part of that though is a result of having a very divided primary mm -hmm. where there was a strong fight. Actually Andy Anderson who was the weakest candidate in terms of the final votes was the one who with whom organized labor was most strongly aligned. Uh, there was a strong anti-case sentiment among labor. Mm -hmm. um, Maisie had some union support but they thought basically she was a fairly weak candidate. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that the Lingle people wanted Maisie to win uh, in order to be able to debate her and have it be sort of, even though she, the, the old boy network was not behind Maisie, that's mm -hmm. another thing, is yeah, that, that right. <laughs> particular people, you know, like the old Bishop State trustees, for example, tended to be aligned with Andy Anderson, mm -hmm. and Uncle Larry Mihal was in there, mm -hmm. and ILWU was there. Um, uh, Ed Case actually had Governor Inouye behind him, and had most of the senator, uh, excuse me, most of the governor's senator, cabinet no. mm -hmm. w was behind him. Mm -hmm. So Maisie actually didn't have much institutional strength in terms of the old boy network. She was, in a sense, the, the, the weakest in terms of the support of the old boy network. But she was mm -hmm. able to win, I think, because she was a personification of certain things to the Democratic voters. But well, you'd think, yeah, go ahead. Well, one thing I do want to say is that I, Labor did end up supporting Maisie. Yeah. But, but a little bit too little and too late. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the AFL has a program in which, uh, which is a very powerful program mm -hmm. that's employed across the nation. And, and, uh, and basically, it's, uh, it's a on the ground uh, identifying, uh, identifying um, voters and then a, a get out to vote campaign. And, uh, and it was implemented maybe a week or two weeks before the election. And, and mm -hmm. so, unfortunately, it, it was mu much too late. It was kind of late, yeah. But a lot of the volunteers that were out there waving signs and stuffing envelopes mm -hmm. and stuff for Maisie were definitely union people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. They were doing it. So they came through in ways that a lot of the, the Democratic base did not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, okay, now here we're talking about Lingle and uh, Hirono. Uh, we have uh, an interview with uh, Ira Rotter, who's also an observer of the legislature and the political scene. And let's listen to what he says about Lingo and uh, debate it uh, or see if we agree with it when it's ready. I don't see Lingo as a, as a right-wing Republican particularly. If you look at her, her positions on most, I mean, they're talking about cutting taxes on uh, pharmaceutical, on increasing rent or low rent tax. Uh, they're talking about dealing with the schools, improving schools. Lingle is saying she's not going to fire people. Uh, when she was mayor of Maui, I mean, I think that's probably the historical record. Um, she was a moderate. Uh, basically, she said to Cayetano a couple years ago, "Well, how come I don't? You sound like a Democrat." And she said, "I can't stand that the people who are in charge in the Democratic Party. A lot of her values are similar." 
So this isn't like the right-wing Republicans have won, on, like I think in lots of places in the mainland. I think that's kind of scary, frankly, between a Senate and a, and a House and Bush oil people. God, let's pray for us, I guess. Um, I think she's going to, I think she's number one moderate. I think number two, she's smart and knows that she uh, wants to win more seats in 2004. So she's going to um, sort of pick off the low, low hanging fruits. And there are a lot of things that are, everybody agrees really need to be changed. it with another uh, interview, uh, Noel Kent from the Department of Ethnic Studies, and then let's debate, uh, you know, the pros and cons of those ideas. So when the tape is ready, uh, let's roll Noel's. Well, it seems clear in retrospect that the Democratic Party uh, was indulging a lot of illusions. Uh, they felt that they could trot out the name, the old names and the old slogans and uh, rally the faithful, and it really uh, did not happen anymore. Uh, the magic's gone. Uh, the Democrats in Hawaii, they don't really have a program for change. Uh, they don't really have uh, attractive uh, candidates to offer. Uh, they aren't able to tap into the uh, grassroots as they did uh, 40 years ago. Uh, and if the party is going to have a future, it's going to be about uh, reinvigorating those grassroots, about uh, talking to uh, working people and uh, the poor and uh, lower middle class people who are really struggling in Hawaii and convincing them the Democratic Party has some real uh, platforms and real agendas and programs that uh, can help them in their lives. Uh, it's not doing that right now. Uh, that has to change. This needs to be a wake-up call for the Democrats. So we still have hope. Uh, he still has hope in the Democratic Party, and it's a wake-up call for the Democrats. But I mean, that's really a big electric shock, <laughs> it seems to me. Huh? But, what do you think, Claire? Actually, that's, that's the, I would have said that. When you first asked, what, what, what did you think the day after? And I think wake-up call is, is, uh, is definitely mm -hmm. a, uh, is, it characterizes how, yeah. how people mm -hmm. are feeling right now, or the Democratic Party should be feeling. Yeah. Well, there, there are different wake-up calls. Yeah. Four years ago, Ben said, after the, he barely won the election, he said that the party has had a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And what he took that to mean was the party should move more towards a conservative, more conservative pro-business orientation. Mm, mm. And um, there will be different people who sum this up differently. This is the mm. same nationally as well as locally. Whether the party should go more towards working class people, towards women's issues, towards public health issues, towards increasing spending for education, etc., traditional democratic values, or whether they should move more into the neoliberal pro-corporate kind of agenda. And mm. so there will be a fight in the party. Mm -hmm. I think party, the party will probably be doing both things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Ira's point, I like Ira and he's a, a bright guy in a lot of ways, and I think I'm glad to see that argument articulated about how moderate Lingle is. But, and I'm hopeful that some of that will be, be true. But I, I don't think that it's the individual personality of Linda Lingle that's going to determine mm -hmm. what happens. Um, she was the, the face, the human face. And the reason why she was able to win here is because she was moderate. If the Republicans had marketed somebody who was nasty, a la the mainland right wing hardline type, they wouldn't have won. They had to, ta to use somebody moderate in order to, to get in. But there's a whole team that comes with Linda Lingle. Mm -hmm. um, today in the paper they said, uh, they announced one of her team leaders is Phil Hellreich is going to be the guy who's going to be screening people to become the director of the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. Phil Hellreich is a man who's gone to Washington to argue that Hawaii's, the mainland should, should learn not to follow Hawaii's example, that employers should not be required to provide medical insurance for their employees. He's mm -hmm. gone to testify on that. Now this, it was rumored that Lingle would be trying to get rid of employer mandate whatever the term mm -hmm. is, uh, health insurance, um, if she were elected. And she said, no, 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 no. But now the man who is going to be her point man on health issues has a historical record of, of taking that position. Mm -hmm. So we have to watch. And I think we're going to see again and again that, yes, it's going to be you know, the fox in charge of the hen house. Mm -hmm. There's a very real danger of that. So she's beholden to those kinds of forces, whether someone like that you know, or uh, on the in the political base. Uh, so could you speak to the political well, base? Well, there's there are there's a lot of mean-spiritedness mm. among the Republicans. Four years mm. ago, I think that was their downfall. Mm. 
They had a primary where they beat Frank Fossey and they became so triumphant that people started getting scary. People who have been considering voting for Republicans got scared. Uh, I think it's still going to be their downfall. I, I had a fork thrown at me at a demonstration outside of the Christy Todd Whitman mm. uh, event. Uh, Jeff Michelina from the Sierra Club had a beer poured over his head by the Republicans. These were high class Republicans paying $100 to go to an mm. event. Mm -hmm. And um, the same spirit that we saw down in Miami of the Republican bullies, that, mm. that whiff, there's a whiff of that mm -hmm. in the air here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, the Democrats are definitely going to have to mobilize their base. We're going to have to go back to our people and listen to what people have to say. There's been too much complacency in the mm -hmm. party. Mm -hmm. There's been too much uh, trying to, in, in a sense, outright the Republicans. Mm -hmm. This happened during the teacher strike. Ben made that teacher strike go on. Teachers have been at a Democratic state convention. Teachers usually make up 15 or 20 percent of the delegates to the convention. And he outraged them. Mm -hmm. Now, they didn't go for lingual totally. But a lot of them did. UPA is the same thing. Mm. Now, university faculty should be Democrats, mm. and I think a lot of them think they would be, but they went for lingual because Ben forced them into a horrible strike mm -hmm. because he was being following this sort of free market neoliberal kind of ideology. Yeah. Uh, anything uh, no, else no, uh, you no. want to comment on this with regards to labor or something? I, I definitely agree yeah. uh, yeah. with what Bart has been saying about. The, the performance of, the, of our past Democratic yeah. governor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, uh, so um, we're going to go uh, to Ira again, another footage. We're gonna, he's talking about neoliberalism and uh, the question of the Democrats and Republicans. So when it's ready, we can roll. Economically, we've been under neoliberalism for a long time. I mean, Ben Cayetano with occasional uh, bows towards uh, worker rights and stuff like that is essentially selling out the islands to the highest bidder and lowering corporate taxes which are already astonishingly low and Maisie's talking about re getting rid of capital gain taxes, um, attracting more outside. I mean her policies, they put her and Lingles together in a, in, a, you know, in, a, in, a, in a black box and they're not any different. So I don't see that um, Lingal is going to suddenly turn Hawaii into a, a right-wing place. Uh, I don't think she's back that way. I think the folks around her aren't that kind of people. Number two, she's politically savvy, and so she's going to work with the existing people. I, I would imagine she's going to appoint some people who are uh, well-known Democrats for her cabinet. Um, moderate Democrats, business-oriented Democrats, um, easily done. There are a lot of Democrats who are really Republicans with, with no, <laughs> you know, just having to wear a wrong label. Uh, yeah, before we get into it, I'd just like to remind uh, our viewers that uh, we welcome your questions and your comments and uh, the phones uh, Phone numbers are on the um, screen, 956-5670 for Oahu and Neighbor Islands, 1-800-342-7949. So please um, give us a call and uh, we'd like to hear from you. Um, thanks. So, um, Claire, well, here we have a neoliberalism. And of course, neoliberalism is not uh, good uh, for nobody except uh, the neoliberals, <laughs> I suppose. Two sides. <laughs> yeah. Same so, side, yeah. Two sides of the same coin. I mean, the, the, the key to what I said was selling out the islands to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Re regardless of how, how you look at, uh, at, at economics, yeah. what is good for, for the very few and rich and investors and what is good for the general population yeah. of Hawaii. So. Yeah. Uh, well, it's true that um, that Linda Lingle may not be characterized as a as a right wing uh, extreme, extreme right wing. Right -wing. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, the 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 idea that she will probably continue to sell the islands out to the highest bidder is is uh, you know is something yeah. we can expect. Look, for instance, yes. at uh, her program, like a new beginning. Uh, it's uh, basically, uh, you think you're reading like Caetano's thing about strengthening the economy, mm -hmm. tourism, agriculture, and of course she wants to diversify agriculture. Okay, so that's Caetano wanted to diversify agriculture. Tourism, they want to diversify tourism into educational tourism, health tourism, and all the rest of it, and get more tourists. Uh, high technology, I read it, the same thing as uh, what uh, Caetano has been doing. She talks about Act 221. She wants to market the Act 221 that gives incentives to uh, 
uh, investors to come in and invest in Hawaii. So it's the same kind of program. Complementary industries, the same thing. Uh, so it's kind of uh, very interesting uh, to see that, uh, you know, it is really uh, the same neoliberal kind of policies that she's talking. And the, uh, the people on the receiving end, like uh, uh, I remember Local 5 had uh, this uh, big problem uh, over a year ago with this hotel in Waikiki yeah. and so on. So uh, anything happened with that uh, Actually, since? Well, you know, the, what I'd like to do is ask, ask questions with regard to incentives. And I've yeah. been hearing a lot of, uh, you know, talk about incentives to attract business or incentives mm -hmm. to uh, continue to build hotels mm -hmm. and so forth. And, and at the same time, we have uh, the city and the state uh, crying poverty because, the, because there's a budget shortfall. Mm -hmm. and, and the question to ask is, uh, are, are the corporations who are here, hotel corporations for example, as well as potential high-tech and other corporations being made to be good corporate citizens by contributing their fair share of taxes? Mm -hmm. Because incentives generally mean tax breaks. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and I think that in order to have, a, to have a, a budget that can be balanced and do what government is supposed to do, which is to take care of its people, because after all, people are taxpayers and so, and so programs that benefit, um, that benefit workers, that benefit uh, the poor, that, that benefit those who have tra traditionally been excluded from power are exactly what government should do. Mm -hmm. So rather than cut back, let's take a look at why there is a shortfall and, and whether corporations are, are paying their fair share mm -hmm. of taxes. Yeah, right. Bart, anything on that? Well, I, I, I'm sure your listeners have, have a little more familiarity with neoliberalism as a term than, than maybe I do and than, than the general public. But uh, neoliberalism to me means basically you try to cut the cost for business. It's basically trickle-down economics. Mm -hmm. People get confused because it has the word liberal in it. Mm -hmm. And neoliberalism really is, means a return to what was called liberalism mm -hmm. during a time when capitalism was emerging after fighting against feudalism, really. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it was liberating capital. That's what was being liberated. And so it, it gets the double whammy happens, though, because a lot of people who sort of used to be liberals have rediscovered this ideology, mm -hmm. um, a, a pro-corporate ideology, cutting taxes, trying to provide incentives for business, and, and reducing cost to business to the point where they're reducing benefits for workers, wages mm -hmm. for workers, mm -hmm. in order to compete against other low-wage areas. We're being forced into this race to yeah. the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now, the Democrats and the Republicans are both participating in this. It's mm -hmm. sort of the dominant ideology. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the presence of organized labor inside the Democratic Party, it's important. It's importance to the Democrats. Uh, the Democrats in general tend to be a little slower on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was surprised when Ben sort of embraced it as strongly as he did. I think part of the tragedy of Ben Cayetano is he is a working class guy in his roots. You can see that in him. He was advised that this is what needs to be done in order to attract business and help the economy. So he says, I'm a tough guy, I'll take the hits. You know, I, he's proud of the fact he's willing, willing to stand up for, for do what he thinks is right, even if it's unpopular. That's, mm -hmm. He has a certain chip on his shoulder that way. Mm -hmm. And then he got very angry when, after delivering these things to businesses and the hotels in particular, they still weren't supporting him. Of That's course when, not, yes. when he, he got mad and, and he said, hey, if they don't like it, they can sell their hotels and get out of here. Somebody else will buy it. And that's right. when the working class kid, mm -hmm. you know, expressed himself because mm -hmm. he knew he was betraying working people, but he thought that's what had to be done. In the case of Lingle, you don't, I don't think you have that resistance. Mm -hmm. I think she, all of her being is consistently mm -hmm. on the side of, of business. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I'd have to disagree with, with uh, Ira. He may turn out to be the better prophet. I've been so wrong before. I, I will agree that probably she will appoint people who are nominally Democrats to her cabinet. Mm -hmm. But she's got a dilemma. Already Calvin Say and Bobby Bunda have said, and they, they're saying this mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. They've said, hey, we're willing to work with her. But you look at what her program is, what her agenda is. She wants to increase money to education, both the university and into the, the classroom. Mm -hmm. And yet she wants to cut taxes at the same time. It can't be done. Yeah. See, and, and frankly, neither Maisie nor Lingle were talking about the dilemmas. In education, one thing that has to happen is they have to increase spending per pupil in the classroom. There's this hallucination going on that there's all this money that's being spent at the top levels of this Department of Education mm -hmm. bureaucracy. Now, there are problems with bureaucracy and it's stifling of creativity inside Department of Education, but there ain't that much money there. Mm -hmm. You know, Hawaii is spending something around, I think it's $6,600 per pupil per year. 
whereas on the mainland, the better schools are spending eight and nine thousand dollars. Here in Hawaii, Punahou is, I believe, spending thirteen thousand mm. per pupil. We're near the bottom in terms of spending per pupil, especially when you consider the cost of living in Hawaii. If you want us to be even in the middle of the pack in terms of education, you're going to have to pay more. It's going to take more money. Frankly, yeah. it's going to take raising taxes. But nobody, Democrat or Republican, wants to say that. So I say Lingle's not going to be able to deliver on her agenda. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to be forced to run against the Democrats and blame the Democrats in, in the legislature for screwing up her agenda. And two years from now, when Republicans want to be elected, since they can't deliver the goodies, there's going to be a real temptation. She won't be tempted by it, perhaps, but she may give in to it. A tem temptation to run again on right-wing social issues, to get working and middle-class people to support the Republicans against, I don't know, the queers or against the unpatriotic people or, or otherwise. So the right-wing social issues may again become a more important yeah. essential yeah. part yeah. of the Republican strategy. Yeah. Yeah. She has already uh, something on homeland security. She wants to make like uh, uh, Hawaii um, uh, to have a department uh, or sub-department of homeland security to protect the um, entry to the United States, the west coast uh, you know, of the United States from mm. uh, to be Hawaii, that, that the one that protects people from you know entering here, protect the west coast from that. Yeah. So what does that mean? Does that mean stricter uh, entry requirements? Uh, for Japanese that, that's tourists, that's or? the thing you see, and uh, that would be a killer for uh, tourism. I mean, you know, it's a uh, can they th do they think uh, about this? I mean, on the one hand, she wants to encourage tourism. On the other, she wants to protect the homeland. And uh, by having this uh, department of homeland security, uh, you know, based here, the, the uh, regional uh, homeland ah. security area, hmm. yeah, for the west coast. So that uh, is uh, kind of a well, big you know, problem. Related to that, even it's before, right here and there. Yeah, go even ahead. Even before Lingle came in, mm -hmm. um, the local Democrats have been working with uh, the national types. They did this during the Asian Development Bank demonstration. They set up an, an anti-terrorism council here before September 11th mm -hmm. because they had these fears of what would happen to yeah. the Asian Development Bank demonstrations. Yeah. But the, um, there are plans to set up a regional, I believe it's being called the Pacific uh, Counter-Terrorism Training Center at Barbers Point, yeah. where they will be training mm -hmm. security forces from throughout Asia and the Pacific region. Mm -hmm. It sounds like shades of School of the Americas where right. Latin exactly. American forces right. were trained. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's exactly those forces that have been trained by the U.S. government that have a record of being most involved in mm -hmm. human rights abuses, yeah. including the troops that were trained by the U.S. and immediately went into East Timor and mass helped organize those militias that, mm -hmm. that massacred people right. fighting for their independence. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's watch another uh, interview with Noel Kent. And he's talking about uh, the Democrats and the uh, Republicans and uh, in terms of their agenda and stuff like that. So when the tape is ready. Maisie's program wasn't really uh, distinguishable from Lingle's program. And uh, that uh, causes a lot of problems. Why vote for Democrats when, in fact, Republicans uh, you know, are uh, old wine and new bottles in a certain sense. I mean, there's, there's been no real new approaches and new initiatives toward community-based economic development, for instance. I mean, Democrats haven't really dealt with that. It's the same old tourism model uh, with uh, very small modifications, uh, and times have really changed. And uh, there's an economic, uh, social, moral crisis in Hawaii, which the Democrats just have not dealt with in any real fashion. I think the Lingle administration is going to be a disaster. Uh, I think uh, it's basically going to be even more pro-business than uh, what we have now. Uh, I think development controls will be uh, uh, lifted. Uh, there'll be an attempt to uh, establish uh, an environment that's conducive to overseas investment. And this means lifting all kinds of regulations and controls that at least some progressive democratic administrations have laid down. So uh, I don't see Lingle as having any answers for the sort of uh, economic, political, social, moral crisis that grips Hawaii today. So, uh, you know, this is some of the things that uh, reinforces some of the things we were talking about, uh, Bart talking about. But uh, let's do uh, one more uh, interview uh, with, um, with John Okamura. And he's talking uh, about the shift in the kind of politics that uh, we have seen. And then we can see why it is indistinguishable, that kind of program and so on. So when the tape is ready. Clearly, that uh, shift to the center is taking place in Hawaii, al along with the rest of the country. Um, 
we've seen that in the 1980s already in the types of legislation that was coming out of the, of, uh, the state legislature and became much more pronounced in the 1990s when they were supporting the same kinds of things that Republicans nationally supported, such as corporate tax, tax breaks. This is uh, one of the major features of uh, Caetano's Economic Recovery uh, Task Force. Uh, unfortunately, this is something we see in Hawaii increasing over the past decade the uh, lack of commitment to the, the kinds of principles that the, that the Democratic Party stood for in its beginnings in the 1950s, 1960s, social justice, social equality, economic reform. And uh, I think the voters have found that those uh, kinds of conservative um, measures taken even by Democrats very appealing, such as those by uh, Ed Case. Uh, I think that's how you would explain his success or near success as a Democratic candidate in the primary election. The last uh, gubernatorial debate between Linda Lingle and Maisie Hirono, uh, sponsored by OHA, Linda Lingle said she would uh, put Hawaiians back on the land immediately. There was no need to wait for infrastructure to develop. This is very similar to what uh, William Quinn had promised when he first ran for governor uh, following his statehood. It was called the second Mahele, and he gained a lot of Hawaiian support in his election at that time, but clearly he did not deliver. So Hawaiians should hold Linda Lingle to that promise then, and in terms of a, of a community that is very much organized at the grassroots level. They should go to her immediately and say, what is your plan then for putting us on land again to address the kinds of uh, problems faced by the Department of Hawaiian Homelands? Yeah, especially, if, uh, especially when her running mate is a uh, native Hawaiian, and uh, I suppose uh, a lot of Hawaiians this time voted the Republican mm -hmm. more so than maybe in other elections. Uh, so, um, any quick comment on this? Well, he may well be the front person for the for their administration in uh, having responsibility for native Hawaiian affairs, and uh, this is, of course, the, uh, a way also of protecting herself and putting the blame on him if the programs fail, that uh, they can say, well, the native Hawaiian community didn't want to work with Duke, uh, because they still have to work with the legislature. There's still Act 304, which was ruled unconstitutional by the state Supreme Court, but nonetheless still uh, maintain that uh, Hawaiians were owed at least $10 million in, uh, from the ceded lands revenues. That has, still has to be resolved by the legislature. Yeah, so um, there you go. I mean, native Hawaiians and workers and, you know, all that. Yeah. Other thoughts. Um, I, I agree with John is that the, the native Hawaiian community should definitely hold Lingle's feet to the fire with regard to, uh, to the promises that were made, much in the same way that William Quinn made, whereas somebody at at the Union Hall said the other day, hey, brother, we better go get our tents. Mm -hmm. We gotta get ready. Because I remember reading in the advertiser the day after the election that uh, the very first question was to, to Lingle was, uh, what do you think swung the vote? And she mm -hmm. said the OHA debates, mm -hmm. in which she, she performed very well, making promises and so forth. And so, therefore, John's right, is, you know, uh, Kanaka Maoli should really demand that, um, that all the promises that were made are, are carried through, yeah. and then and we'll see from there. Yeah, you'd also see that uh, you know the Native Hawaiian issue has been uh, the cent uh, you know had the center stage in terms of uh, Hawaii politics uh, in a, in a, in many ways, and everybody the Democrats uh, promising the Hawaiians you know that they'd be good for them, and so. Uh, the Republicans this time, and you know what happened uh, in terms of uh, you know the Bart and I were talking about it, that the question of uh, the balance and the ticket, yeah, between Lingle and Iona versus like uh, you know Hirono and Mat Matsunaga. So, uh, to what extent do you think this had uh, any effect on the elections? Uh, do you think, you know, just like your gut reaction? Or oh, no, I, I think that was uh, politically savvy of mm -hmm. Lingle to do. Mm -hmm. and, and someone added that uh, Iona's wife is, is a Filipina. Mm -hmm. And so there was appearance of much more diversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bart, anything on that? Uh? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's clear. Um, I mean, there are a whole bunch of things to talk about. And, and um, Lingle picked Iona to be her running mate. Uh, she had originally recruited uh, Dalton Tanawaka. And then when Iona became available, she quickly switched signals and started sending signals that she wanted him to be the running mate because the Republicans were looking for a Hawaiian swing vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I, I think that, frankly, her promise to give land, even if Hawaiians have to put tents on it, is an attractive sort of promise. I think that the Democrats have failed Hawaiians uh, year after year after year. I think the more the resources can be put in the hands of Hawaiians for they themselves to figure out ways of making things mm -hmm. happen, I think it's, it's, it's better. Um, to some extent, uh, um, the real strategy is going to be coming up with a viable form for self-governance for Hawaiian mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. whether it's an autonomous thing within the state or whether it's even an independent kind of thing, coming up with some sort of entity whereby Hawaiians themselves can have adequate resources and control of those resources and determine their own future. And um, the Democrats haven't done a very good job on that. Mm -hmm. Um, this l brings me to something else, though. Another reason why Lingle's going to have trouble is for the last four years when she's been running for governor, she had opportunities where she could go and she could testify at the legislature on bills. Mm -hmm. She testified on hardly anything. She didn't want to take sides and lose base of support. Mm -hmm. And now she's responsible for proposing legislation. For example, on the Hawaiian stuff, mm -hmm. she could have gone to Washington and said, in broad outline, I support the notion of, of the Akaka Bill, the basic thrust of it, mm -hmm. not necessarily the quit claim aspects of it, but she could have said, I support a Hawaiian self, you know, sovereign uh, entity recognized by the federal government as representative of Hawaiian people under the control and having resources, but she didn't. Yeah, and we know why. I mean, because there's a lot of opposition from uh, conservative Republicans mm -hmm. to that. Well, right? the, the biggest uh, networks that have been fighting, yeah. like supporting Freddie Rice and stuff, are Republican networks. Yeah, sure. And locally, Pacific Legal Foundation yeah. is tied in with the whole previous Bush and Reagan administration and the Coors people and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. which is Richard Mellon Scaife, and that's where all the money is coming mm -hmm. from. Um, but now she has to deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that he talked about, which we haven't really talked about too much, is this demographic shift. Yes. Uh, there have been a lot of things that have sort of plate tectonics, mm -hmm. I think, that are, that are going on here, where we have surface phenomena, but there are these underlying things. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about demographic shifts in terms of class. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democrats were strongest, both in Hawaii and on the mainland, when there was a strong trade union movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, those of us whose politics are more progressive, when we think fondly of the Democrats, we think really of, of the New Deal types of, of mm -hmm. programs that Franklin Delano Roosevelt did. But he did those in the context of a Great Depression mm -hmm. and taking measures to put income into the, the, the pockets of working people. So that they can support the economy and the companies. So they can the support the economy. Stuff, Instead yeah. of trickle Businesses, down, it yeah. was, you know, right, percolate right. up. Mm -hmm. And in Hawaii, in many ways, the democratic so-called revolution of the 50s was somewhat elements of the New Deal coming late to Hawaii Absolutely. And, and combined yeah. with some elements of the civil rights movement. Yeah, mm -hmm. so let's not have any illusions about, you know, those progressive kind of stuff that uh, oh, allow been me happening. My, allow me my illusions. That's how I can be optimistic and continue. But, but what has happened demographically is that people have moved further and further away from that experience. Yeah. Where you had the plantations, where you had yeah. common experience, mm -hmm. you had workers, whether they're Filipino or Japanese right. or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, all living in the plantation camp mm -hmm. with the Haole Luna on the hill and the Republican oligarchy running everything in their exclusive clubs. Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of basis for a lot of mm -hmm. unity. Mm -hmm. And class divisions were very clear. Mm -hmm. And ethnic alignments lined up pretty closely with class. Mm -hmm. That has shifted so much with the breakdown of the plantations, yeah. the moving into smaller workplaces, ununionized workers who are ununionized in large part because you don't have that kind of collective experience where you have mm -hmm. the commonality where it's easier to organize. Yeah. The last bastion of this really is the vertical plantations mm -hmm. of the hotel workers down in, yeah. down in Waikiki. Right. So um, let's uh, see uh, another interview uh, with Ira because Ira is talking about uh, uh, some uh, legislators, uh, you know, on both sides, Democrats, Republican, new, new blood coming together, you know, and trying to do some kind of exciting things, as he puts it. So when the tape is ready, uh, we'll uh, do that. Yeah. I'm interested in some of the younger um, people coming into office, and there are maybe half a dozen new faces that I'm interested in. Um, most of them are young. There's a woman named Cindy Evans out in the Big Island who's um, our age, but she's, I would call, part of the liberal background. She beat Jim Rath, which is kind of interesting, kind of a cranky, um, oh, I don't know, not right-wing Republican, but just kind of a ordinary character. She beat him. So I think you're going to find some interesting coalitions emerging as Lingle 
initiating programs, and a lot of the progressive Democrats are going to go along with those things. They've been trying to ch change the school system, for example. Uh, the young Democrats from the House I'm talking about, the Senate is, you know, Afghanistan warlord type place. Um, they initiated, for example, some, some, some within the framework of the way the school system works, some pretty substantial changes. Well, that just got creamed in the Senate. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, before we discuss this, we have a caller on the line, Tony, I believe. Uh, so, hi, Tony, you're on the air. Where's Tony? Oh, he's not on the air. Aloha. Aloha. How are hi. you, Tony? Go ahead. Hey, Claire. Aloha. This is Pony. <laughs> Tony. Tony, P O N I. Oh, P O N I. My goodness. Ah, ah, Tony, yeah. I, uh, Claire, remember I worked at the Bishop Museum. Tony Kamau. Mm. I, Claire, I just wanted to make a comment about the Republican Party. And if we know our history, Prince Kuhio was our congressman. He was a Republican. Mm -hmm. And he went up and he did a lot for the cause of the Hawaiian Hope, making it the Rehabilitation Act to take the people back to the land, the fishermen to the sea, and the farmers to the kula or the mountain area. Well, it seems like when the government got a hold of that, they switched it around and put the farmers at the sea level, and they put the uh, fishermen in the mountains. So it really didn't work out when you wanted to rehabilitate, <laughs> right? It don't make sense. Yeah. But that's what we were. We were farmers and fishermen. Uh -huh. And, you know, when we read of the Hawaiians, as soon as they learned how to read and write, they did daily journals. They wrote journals as far back as the 1830s. They had personal journals. They wrote of every event that went on. Mm -hmm. These journals were Ohana journals, journals within the household. They're not in text, mm -hmm. but they're in the household to this day. And sometimes when people think that the Hawaiians are not educated enough to know of who they are, well, surprisingly, they do know, it's just that they're tired mm -hmm. of the whole thing. So they get ma'a with it, and they adapt like limo to the condominiums that come out of the ocean. All so right. we adapt like limo. We can, we heal within, and we adapt ourselves to the new ways. And then we wait until it's the right time to go back to the Aina. So Kuhio right. did plan, and he had the help of many of the, Republic, uh, many of the Republicans, we're also Hawaiian uh, representatives, and if you go back and look at all the Hawaiians that actually were Republicans, you know, you'll see how the yeah. things, because of a lot of, uh, it just went from yeah. that into a new government hand, and so that's how it is. So I think maybe Linda, you know, being a, a Republican, can kind of go back in history and see what they did really for the people. Okay, mahalo, Pony. Mahalo, mahalo. mahalo. Aloha, aloha. Yeah, thanks. So um, uh, let's uh, go to another uh, 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 interview, actually, with uh, John. He's talking uh, about also, you know, the faculty union and uh, those kinds of issues, and then we can discuss uh, those. So when the tape is ready. The faculty union supported uh, Linda Lingo, but Evan Dobell came out with an endorsement of Maisie Hirono in the last few days leading up to the election. So this, is, I think, will help him when he goes to the legislature beginning in January seeking support for the programs he's um, advocated, such as expansion of the university to the neighbor islands, four-year campus uh, at, on Maui beginning as early as next year or development of the film school. Uh, it's another question whether if those bills in support of the university pass and get to Linda Lingo, is she going to support those bills that, uh, or these programs that Dobell had uh, advocated and sought the support of, of uh, legislators? I think one of the advantages that, that um, the Democrats still retain is the two-thirds majority in both houses of the state uh, legislature. Uh, as a result of the Republicans losing those four seats in the, the, um, the state house, because now they're in a position where they can overturn uh, any bills that have been vetoed by Linda Lingle. Uh, this has been very rare in Hawaii's history. It, it happened for the first time under the Cayetano administration. 
Um, but this was the case in the 1950s when uh, the Democrats first gained control of the territorial legislature. There was a Republican governor, and many times they had to overturn his vetoes of the very progressive legislation that they had uh, passed. Yeah, so um, uh, we, let's watch another tape also because um, on the same uh, kind of uh, issues uh, uh, by Ira, uh, it's about the Democratic Party and how the Democratic Party is doing, you know, so when the tape is ready. So I think there needs to be a coherent ideology and, and the Democratic Party here is, is floundering around. What does it really stand for? Does it stand for union bosses? Um, setting up rigid rules in the bureaucracy and nothing gets done um, except to protect uh, rights, which I think is important to do, but I think if you dig in too rigidly, you're going to lead to some very bad things. Um, so I've been talking with some folks about the idea of a clarifying what the Democratic Party ideology might be, the pro more progressive kind of ideology. What the old Patsy Mink, it's, it's in a way, um, Patsy stood for something. And I, I think maybe that's a rallying point to, to talk about it. But Patsy was also a classic liberal and it wasn't looking at centralization of power, which we desperately need to do the opposite of in Hawaii, decentralized power. Well, these are interesting, uh, you know, observations, um, you know, by uh, Okamura and also uh, by Ira. And Ira said something earlier about, uh, you know, the new uh, folks coming up uh, in the legislature as well. So, um, any comments on this? Uh? Yeah, I, a lot of things went through my mind as I listened to Ira's, you know, comments about, quote, union bosses and so forth. And I think what we really need to do is to focus on what it is that unions do mm -hmm. and basically represent those who, who really have not had power and mm -hmm. to, to have the ability to do collective bargaining, to, to, uh, to become powerful enough to influence a legislature in terms of having uh, prepaid health care, mm -hmm. so that anyone who works 20 hours or more a week mm -hmm. has the ability to, ha to have mm -hmm. access to health care. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and, and uh, to, to kind of riff on his, his uh, discussion of Patsy Mink, the last thing I remember about Patsy Mink in, in my recent his, uh, memory was Bill Clinton was here to support the Democrats and, and it was also a tribute to Patsy Mink. Mm -hmm. And there was a clip of her up on a podium saying, Newt Gingrich's contract on America. And yeah. I'm not certain if she used that term, contract oh. on America, is basically uh, has, a, has at, at, its, at its heart the destruction of unions. Mm -hmm. And so if that's standing for something, then, uh, you know, then I would ask uh, yeah. Professor Rota to really, rather than use the term union bosses, because that's sort of an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there are, you know, human nature uh, <laughs> has given us some union leaders who, are, who, are, uh, who do not have the interests of the members mm -hmm. at, oh, at yeah. heart. Uh, we really take, need to take a look at what unions stand for and what unions, not only in Hawaii, but in the U.S., uh, will we'll be facing w within these next uh, next yeah. couple of years. Uh, let's yeah. Let's come. Uh, are you done? Yeah. Uh, or, yeah? <laughs> I could go yeah. on, but yeah. I'm done. But uh, no, I mean, <laughs> I thought you you finished. Uh, you will, well, did you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I mean, Sorry. just with regard to mm -hmm. uh, to the fact that uh, that uh, in terms of, of a homeland security department, yeah, right. that recently the uh, the. Uh, the Longshoremen, the ILWU, were in a dispute with the uh, Pacific Maritime That's Association, right. and and the, uh, the the Secretary of of Homeland Security basically, you know, uh, intervened. Mm -hmm. And now, what does that mean for for uh, what happens when any union decides to uh, to take its right to strike out? That's does right. that mean that unionists are now going to be called terrorists, yeah. as people of uh, you know of color are or immigrants are? It's very frightening yeah. to. Yeah, it's, it becomes like, you know, against the security of the United States. Right? And this is like a kind of uh, really uh, something uh, disconcerting if they want to go that route in dealing with labor. Yeah? Ex exactly. Yeah. And, and the whole idea of, uh, of, the, of what I've heard uh, uh, described uh, 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 
president and, and, and governor-elect is the in-your-face leadership mm -hmm. kind of thing. If you're yeah. not with us, you're right. against us. Right. Can I, I just struggling. real quickly just follow up? First, yeah. I think yeah. there is such a thing as union bosses, mm -hmm. and I think that, that it's a distortion that's not just from human nature. It's the way unions are structured and how they operate in, in our society mm -hmm. is it tends mm -hmm. to encourage. It's a feudalistic kind of, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you have, have people like Gary Rodriguez, who is oh. running the union in a very thuggy kind of, kind of manner, very undemocratic manner. But the solution is not the Republican solution, which is to weaken the unions. It's to, the solution is to increase the Democratic component in the union. Yeah. Yes. And, and this is also important in terms of neoliberalism. What we need is we need to have institutions like unions that are able to get more purchasing power into the pockets of working people less in terms of profits into the, the employer and more into the, the working people so we can buy more goods and we can stimulate the economy locally. Um, mm -hmm. So the unions play a very important role in helping soften at least, if not defeating, neoliberalism. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a caller here. He doesn't want to be identified. Uh, he has uh, this question and uh, we began to talk about it. What do you think organized labor should do to ensure that issues of interest of working people would be truly addressed? You know, so. This is the question. And so we just started talking about it. But uh, if you want to um, think about it while we uh, watch another video, let's do that. And uh, actually, we have one for uh, Noel Kent talking about how democracy is in trouble. OK, mm -hmm. when it's ready. Well, I think democracy is in trouble, both in Hawaii uh, and on the mainland. Uh, voters are staying away in droves. The political parties have been uh, weakened you know, beyond any sort of recognition of what they formerly were. Uh, there's a sense of tremendous cynicism about the whole political process. Uh, people are really uh, uh, fed up with the whole thing, and uh, they don't see politics as really serving you know, uh, their lives or relevant to their lives and their aspirations. And uh, what we're about to see over the next several years, I think, uh, is a concerted attack uh, by the Republican right on uh, regulation of, of business, on uh, women's uh, reproductive rights, uh, the imposition of uh, right-wing federal uh, judges who are going to shift the whole uh, uh, moral tone of the, of the court toward the, uh, the Christian right. Uh, the uh, core constituencies of the Republican Party are going to be uh, paid off very, very generously. Uh, and I think we're going to see uh, the rising inequality between classes, which is you know, the hallmark of, uh, of the American economic system, uh, intensified. Uh, obviously, uh, the Bush people are going to pr try to privatize Social Security, which is, uh, in view of what's happened to the stock market, is really an absolute disaster for elderly people and people moving into Social Security. And I think they're also going to try to uh, uh, just eviscerate, just destroy any kind of environmental protection. So I, I would, I would think that uh, the Arctic will see uh, drilling, for instance, for oil, uh, and I'd see a lot of the environmental protections which have been laid down by uh, the Clinton administration absolutely destroyed. Uh, so uh, the short-term benefits will be for this small elite, uh, the small elite business and uh, financial and professional class, which uh, basically controls this country right now. Uh, the top 1%, 5% of incomes, and I see the rest of us uh, basically uh, paying the price for that type of policy. Uh, Claire, what do you have to say to the caller and also to uh, in actually, regards to those kinds actually, of issues? Actually, exactly. What, what Noel says is, is very true. It's, it's quite frightening, and in answer to the question of what do you think organized labor should do to ensure the issues of interests of working people would be addressed, as well as the Democratic Party, uh, is <laughs> Don't mourn, organize. Yeah. And I think that is, that, that is the only way yeah. to, to remedy yeah, this. To try and have uh, you know, a social movement coming up, you know, trying to do those kinds of things. So anyway, we're uh, basically um, out of time. Uh, so I'd like to thank you for coming and thank the viewers for uh, watching. And thank you for your questions and comments as well. And so uh, we'll see you next uh, month. Aloha. Hey. Oh.